Okay, so hello everyone. Um, on today's session, we we are having a lecture by Patricia Edwin Popu, and the lecture is going to be on the topic nature's blueprints. Um, Patricia is an artist born in Kumasi, Ghana, but she is currently in Washington D.C. and she attended university in Ghana and received her Bachelor of Arts in publishing from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in 2015. And she's currently a recipient at the College of Arts and Science at American University in Washington, DC, where she's pursuing her Master of Fine Arts. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, fellow cohorts, please let's welcome our mentor, Patricia Edwin Popu. Hi, nice to meet you all. Uh, my, my voice is a bit crusty now because I have a cold, but I'll be, I'll try to keep my, uh, my language legible so everyone can hear me. <laughs> but um, it's, it's a pleasure to be here to present uh, my practice to um, the cohort and also um, questions, receive any questions about um, what the art practice is about, what my art practice is about, and art in general, and how, um, yeah, we can communicate and have a conversation on that. Um, I would share a presentation that um, I worked on. So, um, um, so I, I began painting in 20, 18 and it was a journey that i reached after i had um i'm sorry for that um a journey that okay all right a journey that i reached from um going through advertising going through um architecture and finally coming back to where i was supposed to be and um, I felt that art was that channel for me to show um, the, the talent that I had. And I just was able to create easily and um, it didn't require so much, um, it didn't require any, it wasn't a hard thing for me to do. It felt it felt very natural. It felt very pure. It felt very uh, interesting and very fascinating to me. And um, my work is inspired mostly by how nature is actually, and just by science, and just by how um, our world, our world of the time, has changed um, throughout from the origin story, which we all have different types of origin stories that we know. Some from the Bible, which is when Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden or some other, other origin story where um, we talk about the Big Bang or moving on to the story by the Mayans where they believed um, time started, like they had the calendar where they know how time started from that point where they had these gods or you talk about the Greek Greek uh, philosophy where they also have their gods. So there's very different origin stories and I like to pull from um, science which um, gave us kind of a blueprint or gave us just documentation of how time started and how it has transformed to um, the modern day right now. And it gave us um, a knowledge of even light and how light moved and how um, um, our planet looks like and how um, these other planets that we coexist with and these other entities and elements that we coexist with, how they look like and through science, we were able to get all these images and all these um, documentation of our life and our story and how the human race has been. So 
um, my practice has generally been influenced by that. And um, I create like a, a visual language to kind to represent that um, that change in time, a change in that origin of life, that origin of movement, that origin of change of just um, our landscapes. And I create these work just to represent that or just to mimic that. And um, I also utilize a lot of um, waves and gestural movements in my work because I always um, related to how our elements are even though they are so abstract, how they look like and how they um, have been drawn, especially even with um, heat maps and some type of satellite images, or they usually have these waves that even from our hands, these things can be created from that. These shapes can be created from that. So that has inspired my work from the beginning up until now. And I also always, um, always study, always examine that, examine that, and always try to find a way to create a work that will represent um, some images that I look at or research into. And um, down the line that has also um, moved into material um, exploration where um, I moved from painting in um, a frame to moving, moving um, extensively towards material exploration where uh, I picked the plastic, which already was something that I was using daily. And I decided that um, there wasn't a way for me to um, a way for me to work around having it thrown away and seeing landfills and all the troubles that the human race has had with plastic. So I decided that that would be a material that I would work with because it, first, because it was easy to get for me. And I started collecting them and keeping them just so I could explore them and create them into different forms. So that um, exploration from this image started with that, where I found ways to, um, to make mold them into different shapes, into different sizes, and also use them as sort of a documentation of how human beings are on this earth and we have this artificial products that did start from um, trees actually since rubber comes from trees but it is processed into plastic and we're able to have this material that we use for our daily lives but then it ends up being thrown away but it doesn't break down again because of how the, the chemicals that have been used to make make it and um, looking looking down to when we're all probably not here again in a few centuries, um, this plastic will still be here because it will be tucked away somewhere and in a way fossilized, like be, being a fossil, like how we're able to see dinosaurs and have see like how their bones have fossiled all through time and it's still, um, still there for us to have as an archive of a time that was there before us. So this plastic, which um, unfortunately is something that doesn't break down. So it is something that's gonna stay with us um, through time. And it's going to, at a point in time, represent the type of life that we um, spent here um, on the planet. And I was, um, I was just working on that idea and also using that to create that type of that work and how that um, artwork, when I make it, I know it will last longer than time because it will be that representation. It will not break down like how, because I use acrylic paint a lot and with acrylic paint over time, if it's um, not archived properly, it will break down compared to the plastic and 
I also explored other materials in this um, photo where I explored um, styrofoam, which is also one of the plastic materials. And that um, also went into this study where I was, um, I was learning how this material works and how it works with acrylic paint and how it can be um, changed and um, molded into these sculptures where they're actually representations of just how um, our planets, some of the planets that are not close to us, how they look like and how they, uh, um, how they get wear and tear from uh, planetary objects and uh, asteroids and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I have to start the presentation again. So yeah, just thinking of how these things can um, be used in just creating that visual language where I'm able to tell my, my view of the world and how these things have inspired me, how they keep inspiring me every day. And also with color, I am a big um, advocate on color where it's something that changes emotions, it changes how people feel about things. And we actually use color to represent some emotions or some feelings that we have as human beings. So my work has primarily been um, investigating these things, these um, elements, um, how human beings um, experience life and also how these objects and planets and um, nebulas and gas and stars and black holes and how these things, even though they're, they're a, lot of, um, a lot of light years away from us, they're still affecting us. And um, my work represents just that um, movement in time and also representing that time um, giving us uh, some type of documentation of time and how we're moving with it. And uh, I think I would end my presentation here because, um, yeah, basically I have mentioned most of the things that inspire me and the things that I do and the ways that I've been working towards that. And um, um, I would also want to talk about how I've, in my practice where I'm doing all this investigation, it is also um, an artist practice where you're um, in this space by yourself, but you have to also um, know that it's a community and that people that um, are around you who are also creating from their own perspectives or their own um, view on life and the things that they see and how they wanna represent that in paintings or in sculptures or whatever medium that artists choose. So um, it's been quite a journey uh, for uh, since 2018 up until now. And um, I still, I, I'm still investigating more materials, still learning a few more things and just wanna let you know that it doesn't really stop and you always have to be an artist. I mean, you are an artist every day, so it's is something that you have to met. You have to uh, let it coincide with your life because you're working every day and you're spending so much time with the art, even more than the people that end up um, purchasing the art or uh, however they um, uh, digest the art. Your your art. Yeah. So first of all, amazing presentation, amazing work. And Thank you. I, I, what I loved so much was precisely how you installed the work on the wall, the edge of the wall. Like it's, it felt like, um, you know, when we have moss on the wall, like the moss that grows on the wall or this um, plant that have a way of growing, creeping up on the walls. It felt like that. And I was wondering what inspired the way you um, installed your work your piece at the edge of the wall, especially at the corner, not even right at the you know, yeah, basically what inspired the installation, yeah. Yeah, so with that work, I'm looking at um, spider webs. And I I looked at spider webs because spiders have been something that I fear the most. And um, I, I saw that 
they create these um, openings or these like habitat in every place that I go. They have these um, way that they are able to attack a building or attack plants or just create that uh, web. So my um, idea around that um, installing that work is just to look at how these spider webs are created by these spiders, how they, um, the reason behind it, like if it's for food or if it's for as a habitat or uh, just that idea behind spiders in general. And even for for me as someone that was born in Kumasi, um, some of the folklore that we were told as kids, we were told about a spider and how the spider is a trickster and how he creates these webs to capture food. And um, I loved, I was fascinated by that. So I wanted to create a work that would be able to install the same way as spiders install their webs to catch food or to catch whatever that they use it for to stay in or to have families in. But the idea behind installing that work was just around <clears throat> areas that these spiders um, put their webs. So usually in the corners of buildings, um, on top of trees, and uh, just it, it looks like it's not um, visible. I mean, I mean, to them, their world is a bit bigger than we know, but it might look like it's not visible, but it is very visible because some some of the webs, some of the biggest spiders, they make these webs that can go for miles, and usually humans can, are not even able to see them because it's um, very thin and very. Some make it from silk and all of that, but the whole idea behind that installation is just around spider webs and how they they are um, they are placed in around in and around us. Uh, amazing. I'm here in the spider man. So. Uh, please, Theodora, you had a question. Yes. Um, yeah. I was also curious. Um, your type of art. Would you say it's an installation or a painting? So I I would say it would it will be both because I do paint. I do have some paintings which are on the frame type of thing, but I also have um, these things that I install in places in different environments, whether inside or outdoor. So I would say it's both. And I do make paintings. I do also make sculptures that can be installed. And yes, yeah, it's, it's a big show of both. Okay, so with the waves is um how the movements of the hands like if you put the hand on paint or the hand on sand or anything like that the mark making that comes from creating that is closely related to all the types of waves that we have and the waves i mean how even how we represent um radioactive waves how we represent uh, water how we represent um, electromagnetic waves, how we represent um, um, just wind even. So I, I like, um, I moved, I gravitate towards that um, part of it where it's the, the hand, the gestural movements of the hand is so closely related to these type of waves and how they look like in, in um, representational form. So I, I love that um, connection between those two. And the reason why I chose waves is because when I started making those marks, it was closely um, mimicking those waves that I was working in and around, in and around those elements and how they have changed. Even fire and water, um, air, they all have that similarity. So yeah, so the waves are closely related to air, to water, to fire, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so definitely there is a connection because I learned through my um, work practice with architecture, I learned how um, buildings are made, how they are designed, all these shapes around buildings and how uh, 
even in designing buildings, people, um, these forms are created with glass. These um, corners are, are fixed with glass and things like that. So in a way that definitely inspires some of the work that I do because I, I have a, ver a very good understanding of how buildings are and how um, a work like that would fit on a building or even um, wherever that it is placed. So architecture has definitely been um, that one thing that has helped with understanding um, just form and structure and also knowing how to place the doing in installations, knowing how to place these items. So I do I do pick pieces from that experience that I had and it's always something that I, I do enjoy doing because architecture is just like art. It is it's something that um, I always love picking um, ideas from. Program right now, our cohort has been extremely helpful and even with the professors and um, just being in that environment where you're learning so much about art. And um, the reason is because you, in in that program, in, in, in the Master, Master of Fine Arts program, you're able to actually concentrate on your practice and you're allowed to make mistakes, which is something that um, artists, we do find very hard to do because we're always trying to be make, I mean, be perfect, make the perfect work, the most beautiful work that everybody will love. But that is not always the best thing because then you're just becoming more commercialized than you would want for your practice. And during this program, I've just learned that the, it give, it's, it's given me that opportunity to be able to actually um, study my practice and how I want it to be and also have that time to actually do more research on ideas that I'm working around. And um, when when you choose to be a commercial commercial artist, it might not be like that because you're just creating work and selling, creating and selling. But with that, having an MFA, um, MFA and just having that time to just um, just close all like ears and all attention on social media and everything else and just kind kind of coming into your your um, your practice and also learning just new things that you can do to expand how you want to show your work so I think just that period, this period that I'm in right now, and as most, most of the artists too are in, is, is a good thing because then you're just um, experimenting and then you're given freedom to also just learn about your practice and also study and do research and also learn about other artists in different movements. And um, it's, it's something that I do love being in because it has definitely opened my mind further to my practice and even art in general. And I just like how people decide to be uh, medical doctors and they do medicine for the rest of their life and they decide to save people for the rest of their life. So what I would say is just, is something that you've chosen to do and you have to stick by it and continue learning about it. Cause you, you never, you never ever, um, stop learning like you're always going to learn so many things about it and different ways of um working and also with even with um the type of work you're making you should always not think that um you have to stick to one type of um area of art because it's something it's, it's an expression so however way that you want to express that in you should definitely research about it, have very extensive studies on it, and be able to create the work that you love and you want the world to see or you want the world to know about. Or if there are any other issues that you you think you can speak on with your art, you should definitely do that. So I think um, artists, we 
we don't ever stop learning. So it's something that we're going to be doing for the rest of our lives since this is what we've chosen to do. And yeah, that is my advice. So I wanted to ask which of your works, uh, which is your favorite piece among the works that you've done so far and what makes it special to you? Okay, uh, so far, I think um, the work with plastic is one of my favorite because it's because I, I see the potential that it can get to and it it does excite me to just think about it and also to work on it and um that that is really my favorite work just thinking about it and seeing how how um malleable it can be and how it's uh gonna be presented just it just excites me to know about that. So that's that is definitely my favorite work amongst. So I I have a show um, that will be in DC um, in January, and I am excited about that. Um, just being able to let people because I haven't um, I've shown just one time here, and it will be uh, very very great to have people here also see my work because I have shown more in Ghana than over here. You bridging or or finding, losing my words. So four words come up for me. Nature, mm -hmm. nature, materials, consumption, mm -hmm. and commercialism. And it seems like you're trying to find that, mm -hmm. uh, use that as part of your journey. Yeah. I don't know if you speak. Okay. So I wanted to know from when you first uh, reconnected with your art into now, and maybe even making some um, guesses about how you see yourself moving forward with that, um, mm -hmm. what is helping you to tie those items together? Um, in a way that still holds space for your art, but also re uh, honoring, I guess, nature, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, if, if I got your question right, um, I am trying to create that, um, trying, trying to create documents of this perspective that I, I see or experience. And um, basically, I think um, I'm creating a space where even for abstraction, it is something that hasn't really been um, a form of art that um, people of, of color have been um, connected to because most of the work that comes out of um, Ghana or even from Africa as a whole is usually figurative work. And um, I, I want to still be in this space where I'm creating work in abstraction, where I'm still um, learning different ways of exploring material and also using that to represent um, the earth and time. And um, I still wanna continue being in abstraction, still being able to create an abstraction and um, also be able to explore materials, different types of materials, move also in the future, move away from plastic and find out different materials that um, I connect with in any way. So it, it will be definitely a constant journey where I'm always finding different materials to work with and also finding different ways to connect all those things together and still saying what I want to say with the work. Okay. Oh, that answers a question. It makes it, it makes sense. I get where you're going with it. it it's a growing journey for yeah, sure. Definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah, and just considering the potential that you have mm -hmm. with the amount of consumable materials and not necessarily earth friendly materials, mm -hmm. there's a worm there. So I was really curious to see mm -hmm. or to know what where you think you will be able to go with it. So thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you for questions.